So welcome everyone to our first meeting of our Introduction to Networks uh, ITC or Instructor Training Class. I'm glad everyone can make it. Appreciate you being here. I am recording this so I can hand it out or send it out to everyone in the class. Today's first meeting is really all about getting you uh, up to speed on how the class works, kind of answer some questions, get things settled, and uh, get you started on your way for the next week. To begin with, uh, I do want to welcome you to Stanley Community College. My name is Kelly Cottle. I am the lead instructor trainer here at the, at the college. Uh, we're an instru instructor training center and academy support center in North Carolina outside of Charlotte, about 40 miles outside of Charlotte. We've been at Cisco Academy for 16 years, 17 years, a uh, very long time, and have been an ASC since the uh, ASC process started. Uh, we support mainly the southeast, but we support all around the United States, and especially with our training. Our training uh, classes can be anybody anywhere in the United States. We have a pretty big instructor training center here. This course is the first of your CCNA courses that will get you started to teach Cisco uh, courses at your school or your academy. And in this course, what I want to do is to talk a little bit about the structure of, of what's happened so far. I'd love to be able to have this meeting before anything happens, but it's kind of impossible for us to do. So I want to start out with the the three areas that you have to work with in this class. To begin with, all of you have already been into the Moodle site, moodle.stanley.edu. Typically, this is where we have our students do all their classwork, uh, and well, our normal students in, in typical online classes do classwork in our Moodle system. However, for our, uh, our ITC courses and our Cisco courses, we use another site called Netiquette. But I'm going to show you here. You started out here. You started out in your um, Introduction to Networks course. And really, the only assignment you had here was to do the Introduce Yourself to the Class. And all of you did that, and I greatly appreciate it. Then, from here, we're going to break out and go to netacad.com. If you have not been to netacad.com, this is the netacad.com site. Now, when you log in, you're probably going to see just a Learn tab because you don't have the ability to teach any courses yet. If you do see a Teach uh, tab, please go over to the Learn tab. And I, in fact, if you've got the instructor role at your school, you will have a Teach tab. But if you go to the Learn tab, you're going to find our course. And our course, and it may look like this for you, depending on whether or not you're using the new, uh, the new setup, our course is the Introduction to Networks course, the ITC course. So I'll take it back and show you the title for that. You can get here through Moodle. So in other words, you can click netacad.com and then click on netacad or you can go directly to the site that's your choice um, i do need you to once a week log into moodle just to show that you're doing attendance and that's because this is our primary lms most of your work as far as reading and finding the actual materials will be on netacad.com your course is intro itc sp17 now when you click in this course you're going to see the course materials, the lots of course, student resources. By the way, if you need to download Packet Tracer, it's available under student resources. You can go down and download Packet Tracer versions here. So if you don't have Packet Tracer, since this is your first course and you probably don't, you can download and install the latest version of Packet Tracer version 7. If for some reason you've had Packet Tracer on your machine before, let's say you took a course and didn't finish it or whatever, if it's not version 7, you need to uninstall completely version 6, reboot, and then install version 7 so that you've got a clean packet tracer install. Okay. But now, the majority of your work inside of netacad.com is going to be at the modules tab. So when you go to modules, you're going to see every chapter for this course, chapters 1 through 11. Now, you're going to freak out when you first see all the stuff that's in this class. Don't freak out. It's not that big a deal. Now, I freaked out because this is version six of Introduction to Networks, and I had to rebuild this class from scratch. That's why this wasn't sitting in there for you already uh, when you looked at it last week. All of this has been added in in the last day or so. And this is the format that I use for the course. And that is pretty much, you're going to look at chapter one and read it. And now I am going to lecture on the chapters, and I've been working on my, uh, on my videos for those. If you look at my YouTube and search for KCAUTO52, you can look at the Exploration 1 la uh, chapter um, lecture, and it covers the same material as this, but it's in a very different format. But there will be a lecture here that I'll get to you on, on YouTube. But you can right now read Chapter 1, and that's what I'm going to tell you to do. You need to read Chapter 1. You then can do your packet tracers. Now, the way I lay this out 
as I lay it out where you can literally just click this link and it will take you over to where the packet tracer is found. You then can just go down to where it says PKA, click on it, and it will open packet tracer. If you have packet tracer on your machine, you can, I have Chrome, so it downloads it and then it asks me to open it. But it'll download it, and then it's going to open up packet tracer. If it asks you to log in to packet tracer, you need to um, go ahead and put in your credentials again for Netacad. I think we've got some of the folks coming in, or we've got, yep, we've got some more attendees. Good. So you've either got to put in Billy, if you got, you want something, you want to put something on here? There. Okay, I'm going to stop annotating then. But I've already logged in, so you click OK here with the guest. And then now you will see that I've opened the packet tracer. And it also opens another window, which has the information on the packet tracer and what you need to do. Now, there are some of these packet tracers that are literally just look and see like this. This is a packet tracer that teaches you how to navigate packet tracer and what it is. You don't really do a whole lot in this particular packet tracer. In fact, if you look at check results, there's nothing really that gets checked here because it is just a walk through and look at the different parts. So it's going to ask you to go to help. It's going to ask you to look at the tutorials. And then those tutorials actually open up in a, in a web browser over here so you can actually see those. Uh, it opens up in a separate web browser. But these are those packet tracers that a lot of, many times you won't have a lot to do. Still, when you get completed with them, I want you to do a file save as, okay, and just put your name in front of it, okay, and I'm going to just put KFC, that's my initials. I'm going to save it, okay, and then once I was completed, what I've given you in modules is I've given you an upload area. So you can actually go in. And you will have this upload. So when you've completed Packet Tracer 1244, I'm going to ask you to upload it. And so complete the Packet Tracer and upload it with your name plus PT number. If it shows a completion grade, please put that in with your file. Now, what do I mean by that? I want to go down and show you another Packet Tracer. Okay, I'm going to find one that's, um, should be this one, should be building a simple switch network. Yep, so there's a challenge here, Packet Tracer challenge. And this packet tracer has actual items you need to complete. So in other words, you need to, um, sorry, my nose is itching. You need to uh, add in uh, IP addresses. You need to do something uh, to get points. So I'm going to go in here, the skills integration challenge. Okay. And you're seeing that there's 90 possible points in this particular packet tracer. Folks, I'm going to turn off my video so the, the uh, recording won't be so long or so big. But you'll see, use the console connection to access to each switch. Now, the way you do this, you go in here and you go here, and it's going to go console RS-232 to the console. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to desktop, and I'm going to open up the uh, the terminal, 9600M1. Now I'm connected to the switch. All right. Now, I need to name this switch. Now, you don't know how to do this yet, but guess what? You're going to learn. I think I'm connected to S1. Let's look to where I'm connected to. Yep, I am. Now notice, look what happened. I just got one point. All right. Now, I have to configure other items. So line, and again, you're going to learn all this. Don't don't freak out. This is all line con zero, login, password, and it's saying use the password XAW6K. And I should get some more points, unless I typed it in wrong. Yay, I got another point. But in the end, I would like to have 90 out of 90 points. So I actually do check results. And hold on just a second. I clicked on something wrong here. Here it is. And you'll see all the assessment items. Okay, so right now I've only completed two of 90. What I'd like for you to do when you get done, obviously, is save it with your name and upload it. But I would also like for you to just take the snipping tool and just give me a snip of this and upload this also. So just save this as a PNG or whatever. PNG is what this normally saves as. And then, or JPEG, save it as JPEG. And then also upload this file. You can upload multiple files at the same time. This will allow me to, when I'm grading, I don't have to open each individual packet tracer to grade them. Uh, you will find that saves you a ton of time in your own class. You also find that it is a, a, a huge help 
um, and just time saving. You'll also find one of the things I've done here, all these items when you create your own class, this header and all this stuff doesn't exist. There's literally four items under chapter one. The beauty is I'm going to give you access to this course. I'm going to build a shell out of it and copy it and make it to where you can use it for your classes. Uh, and you won't have to go in and create all of these links and assignments and those things. So it will save you a ton of time down the road once you start teaching this course. But again, you're going to do packet tracers. You're going to complete them. You're going to upload them. You then are going to have labs. Now, the labs consist of two different types of labs. One are labs that are written labs, like this one. And this is a Word document. I put all Word documents in here for you. So when you click on this lab, by the way, the labs are to be completed either on in the documents themselves. So, for instance, this here's a this lab right here is a pretty simple lab, research collaboration tool. So you're supposed to go in and it opened up in Word over here, but you're supposed to go in and list at least two collaboration tools you currently use. So, uh, WhatsApp and Skype. Now, I'm going to ask that you use blue text. And the reason for that is, is so I can very easily see your answers, okay? Once you've completed everything, well, at least two reasons, okay? Uh, instant connectivity, blah, 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 blah. And that's not a good answer, but uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying, okay? Once you complete the lab, you're gonna save it with your name and the name of the lab, and then you're gonna upload it just like you do the packet traces, because under the modules, I have an upload for each one of the labs I want you to do. Now, for chapter one, you've got packet tracers to complete, and you've got labs that are really nothing more than written labs, so you go in and do research on the internet and fill them out. Now, for some of our chapters, now first off, let me stop. Any questions so far? Anybody got a question? Unmute yourself, raise your hand, type it in chat. Billy and Derek, you don't have a, you don't have a, uh, looks like microphones, but you can type it in the chat. I'll be able to see. But any questions? Garen, you got a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so on this, does it have the dates, or is that going to be like under a different section? Okay. I have not put uh, due dates in yet. Uh, I just got all this in here. I will be putting due dates in. So uh, I will put those in. Now, let me explain something to you about my due dates. You're all adults, and I know you're probably teaching other classes or working other jobs. If it's due and you miss the due date by three or four or five days, I'm not going to count off, okay? I'm wanting you to learn the material and do as much as you can. I'm also going to show you that when we look in here, some of these, there's a ton of packet tracers. If you do not get every single one of these packet tracers completed, I'm not going to have a heart attack, okay? But I want you to try to get 80% of the packet tracers and the labs done so that you can see. What I do is I build this class, and this is just how I give it to my students who take the class in eight weeks, 10 hours a week. And so I want you to see what your students are having to go through. But those due dates are just to keep you on track. Um, I understand completely that you're not going to hit all those due dates, but let's just try to do it as much as we can. Okay, and then I just had one more question. Uh, I, I know whenever I took this long ago, whenever I was actually a student and did Cisco 1 through 4, um, the packet tracers had bugs in them. Do you want us to document if we find something like that? If you do find something, let me know. Um, these should be fairly stable um, because most of them are, even though this is introduction to networks version 6, most of them are taken directly out of uh, version 5.1. Uh, that's not to say there won't be bugs, but uh, for the most part, yes. If you do find them, please let me know because I'll pass them up the chain. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Did you say did you say what version of packet tracer we should be using? Seven. Use seven, okay. Yeah, use the latest. And like I said, if you happen to have the six installed, make sure you uninstall it, reboot your machine, and then install seven just to make sure everything's completely off the machine. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Okay, so chapter one, uh, again, pretty simple. You've got packet tracers and you've got labs that are written labs, what I call written labs. Now, chapter two becomes a little bit different. We still have packet tracers, work just like they did in chapter one. But in chapter two, we now have some labs that are a little different because if we start looking at them, we're going to see that we actually have labs that will be able to be completed inside of our NetLab system. So, for instance, here's the lab. 
building a simple network. Okay. And here's the Word document, all the stuff you're supposed to do. And on some of them, you won't put that much stuff in, in terms of actually typing in items. But I want you to notice lab 233, if I log into our netlabs.stanley.edu system, and I'm actually going to do this as my student account. So I'm logged in here as my student account. Okay. And you'll see that when I go to scheduler, I've got a class called ITC Intro SP17. That's the course that you're in. That's why I ask you to test your login to uh, netlabs.stanley.edu. When I click here, you'll see there's a lab 233 building a simple network. Now, obviously that correlates to the lab inside the course. So if you open up a lab and it's got a network diagram on it, that's a lab that's going to be in your NetLab system. Now, here's the simple thing you need to do to make a, a NetLab reservation. You click on the lab, pick one of the five pods, pick a time, and it can be even in the future. So let's say on uh, Sunday the 12th at uh, 7 p.m., I know I'm going to have some time. You can go ahead and schedule yourself a pod for that time. So you are able to schedule out as far as you need to. If you need one right this second, just go right to the red line, which is the current time. Click on it. It says now. And you can do a lab of up to four hours in length. Most of these labs that you're doing will take you no more than two hours at most. Load default configs and click OK. You'll now see that I have a thing called Enter Lab. Now, here's, here's the, the ticket. If I click Enter Lab, it'll tell me that it's starting the equipment. Any of you worked with a NetLab system before? Do you have any idea of what, what this system is? Yep, I have. Okay, who, who was that? Is that Gary? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Well, here's the great thing about NetLabs. Packet Tracer is a great tool, okay, but it's a simulation engine. And I always tell people, I've never seen a job uh, article or job posting yet that said two to five years of Packet Tracer experience required. NetLabs is real gear. So right now, on my pods in my data center, I've got two switches and two PCs. These are actually going to be virtualized PCs or being virtualized by NSXI or a, a VMware back, back in. But these two switches are booting. And this system is going through the process of making sure these two pot, these two uh, switches are clean, making sure these PCs are reverted to snapshots. But you're going to have access to these pods to use for your labs. Now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make, go ahead and schedule another reservation for the next lab because I want to see this configuring the switch management address. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you notice I can do two at the same time. Now, obviously, try not to do that simply because it's not like you can really do two at once. Um, it's, you know, you might be good, but most people aren't that good. Notice I exceeded my four hour limit, so it wouldn't let me do a reservation. I'll go back to eight and it'll be fine. Okay. But now I do have to wait for this to boot. So I'm waiting for it to boot as it comes up. And here we have the pods. Okay. And we can now literally sit here and open up our lab and it tells us what to do. So it says, okay, first things first. Uh, we can't cable anything, so we kind of have to know this is a straight through, this is a straight through. This will be crossover unless the switches have the ability to do auto uh, MDX, which they do, so this is a straight through too. But then you can go ahead and configure the host PC. So I'm going to go to PCA, and honestly, this is when it's nice to have dual monitors, because then you can open the lab on one monitor and you can open this on another monitor. And you can see it's actually booting a Windows 7 machine. And I can walk through the lab. So now I can go in here and I can go, all right, I'm going to go to control panel. I'm going to change the IP address on this, on this machine. And I can literally walk through and do the lab just as if I was a student sitting inside of the classroom. Okay. Derek, I, I muted you. I'll bring you back out in a minute when we get, when we get done. Um, so you notice here I can put IP addresses in on the two PCs, and it tells you what to do. It says put this IP address in PCA, put this IP address, and it's 1.10 on A. So I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick so I can show it to you. So change adapter settings. I can open this. And it actually, in the background, maps all your uh, VLANs and things on the switches to make everything work. 
and you can put an IP address of 192.168.1.10, tab tab, and we don't have a default gateway here because we have no router. All right, then I can open up PCB, and I'm going to put an IP address of 1.11. And the beauty is, again, this is a full working lab, and this is how you'll do all your labs. You'll have the access to routers and switches. You will not have to use your own gear. Now, you're welcome to do some of your own gear if you want, but this system allows you to do your labs from a web browser. And it's really the only way I teach these courses online because I can give the exact same experience to an student or instructor sitting in the classroom as I can online. Now, uh, let's see, 192.168.11, destination host unreachable. Give it a second, let's figure out what's going on. There's a chance I foobarred the IP address. My typing is not the world's best, folks. I apologize. I got, I'm still recovering from injuries where I was hit by a truck last March. While cycling, just about killed me. So one ping one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot eleven. I'm not going either way. I'm gonna check my. Don't you love it when a demonstration goes sideways? It's a learning moment. Okay, so the switch is up. The switches automatically have their ports open? Yeah, they're automatically on. Cool. Uh, by default, that's how switches work. Yep, yep. Now, what does happen sometimes is the firewall gets turned on. When you change IP addresses, but this is not a firewall issue because it's uh, you're getting no connectivity at all. You can destination host unreachable. Can you ping it from the switch? I hadn't given the switch an IP address, but I can I can go try it and see. One two six eight one one got that. I've seen this before too. If you uh, change it before the switch port gets fully up, sometimes uh, let's ping myself. Let's, let's ping myself see if that works. All right, so that works. But that doesn't work. Strange. Let me do this. Everybody's in wood? Oh, okay, yeah. Everybody's in BLM one. Let me do this. Big T and VLAN one IP add one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two one one two five five two. Like I said, can't type like you used to. What happens when your hands don't work? Do ping. That worked. So I can ping 110. Can't ping 111. Well, let's go troubleshoot over here. Oh, I see it. Show VLAN. Everybody's in it. Nope, there's a problem. You know what? I bet you the lab set up where you're actually supposed to change it. That's what I get for not reading the lab ahead of time. That's all right. Oh, that's right, oh, that's right. Switch information. There it is. Duh. Okay. It won't work because I'm a doofus. 
See, they've got it in a different VLAN. All right, we can fix that. That's what I get for going all the way over to uh, um, Chapter 2 Labs without paying attention. That'll work. Get them in the same VLAN. Should work. Might take them a second to come up, but. All right, I'm not going to kill us sitting here doing this, but give me just a second. I'll... We got everybody in VLAN 1. Let's do this. Do pint. Huh. Okay, so I'm pinging 111. I should be able to ping 110 now. If not, then I'll go fix the link across the 01 to 01. Which should not be a problem. But let's go see. Hmm, that's what it is. It's not connected for some reason. Not like a little troubleshooting exercise for the class. It's not connected. Hmm, okay. Show. It may very well be this whole lab can work without doing the the connectivity across. And I believe that's what it is. Because without that link down, now it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be up. All right, I'll do some troubleshooting, folks. It looks like that link is not connected. Shut, no shut. There's, it's not doing the cable connection correctly. So um, so that failed miserably, but you did see we could actually use it to do the um, the IP addresses on the PCs and on the routers, well, on the, on the switches. Let's see this one. This is a different one. It's just one PC and one switch. You're doing basic switch management. So you'd be actually, this is, this is really one you need to do beforehand. You see it's actually still booting. One of the things I want to mention to you is when you do a pod reservation, it takes about eight, eight to ten minutes for the pod to boot up. So be aware of that. Uh, make sure you give yourself time. Plus, at the end of your reservation, if you do a 50-minute reservation, uh, you only have 40 minutes because really you only have 30 minutes because 10 minutes to get the pod booted. And the last 10 minutes of your reservation is used to clean the pod off and make everything work correctly. Um, so be aware of that. Also be aware when you finish a lab, if you're done with it, you can click I'm done, and that will actually finish the lab reservation and close it out, make it available for somebody else. I'm actually going to go ahead and since this has got me got me wondering about this system, I'm, well, not the system itself because I know it works, but I'm going to go in and test another pod once class is over and see what's going on. All right, um, so inside of Netacad, Again, you've got some labs that are, are physical labs. Now, if you have gear at your site, let's say you're at a school and you want to build this lab and do this lab on gear at your site, that's fine too. I don't mind because you, you really do need to connect the cables and play with it the way you're going to do it in the classroom with your students. 
be aware, I would like for you to do some of the labs on my NetLab system, uh, just because one of the cool things you'll find is that as a and as an instructor, I can actually go in to all the labs that students do, and I can actually look, and I can see every single command that you put into a router. So I can actually see your session configs and what you've done. So here, you know, this is exactly what was typed in by, in the lab that I did previously. So if you do your labs on NetLabs and you have an issue, I can look at it and say, oh, okay, here's the problem or here's an issue. Uh, I love this system, too, because it makes sure that when students do labs, uh, I can look at what they did and say, hey, you really didn't do the lab, did you? And they're like, no, we're not doing So if you just log in and don't do it, I know, okay? So you have packet tracers that are completed with packet tracer, and then you have labs that are completed with our NetLab system, all right? And I will figure out what is going on with pod three, because that was kind of interesting. One of the few times I've had the system do that. So I have a uh, question on the labs from the pods. Shoot. Uh, do, do we have to save anything for it to save the uh, the commands we're typing, or it is it automatically done? It's automatic. Okay. It's automatic, and it will also even at the end save the final configs of your devices for you. And so I can go and look at your final device config. This is how we'll do our hands-on final for the class. You'll do it inside NetLabs, and then I can go and look at everything you type and know whether or not you, uh, you completed the hands-on. So, yeah, nothing on your end. All you have to do is complete the lab just like you would do the lab in a, in a lab environment. So there's, uh, I, I know when I previously did NetLab, so there, you don't want us to save the configs in NetLab or anything like that then? No, you don't have to. I mean, if you want to do a copy run start or a WR, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. And it's not a bad idea to do that just in case something happened you'd get disconnected. Um, you can reconnect, but no, it's, it's, it's all saved by default on the system. And if you do a copy run start, that's fine. It's not a problem because at the end of the reservation, the system cleans everything off. So you don't have to worry about it, it uh, messing anything up on the system. The only thing it can't do is it can't recover from a deleted flash on a switch. So please don't delete the flash on my switch. Uh, so then what uh, What are we uploading on the Netacad site? Anything or? Uh, yes, you'll upload the, the completed lab. So look, so when you go, and by lab, I mean this. You're going to do, like, if the lab has a question on it, like right here, status, up, protocol, up, you know, so I'm saying you'll fill in the answers. Why are some fast unit ports are up and others are down? Some are connected, some are not. And so this is what you're going to fill in and upload. So basically you're doing you know the, the labs and, and filling out the text for me. Okay. What can be ping uh the cable between Two switches may not be connected. So, you know, those are those are the things you're going to upload to me. It's the completed any of the questions that are in the lab itself. Okay. That's why I give you the Word document, so you won't have to try to do a PDF and download it and play with it. You just got the Word document. Now, one thing. Go ahead, Scott. Is that uploaded in? In the um, Moodle, or where is the uh, actual Word documents uploaded into? In in netacad.com. Okay. I'm all sorry. My, I got here late. I had some difficulty getting in. That's no problem at all. That's no problem. All of the uh, all of the the items we download and work on will be in netacad.com. Moodle is really just honestly, we have to prove that you're in the class, that you you've come through Moodle, and that you're logging into Moodle once a week. Uh, but all of our main work is done in netacad.com. This is where you read, by the way, I didn't show it, but to read the material, you just launch the chapter, and you just click launch the chapter, and then all your material is right here. You don't have to have a book. Everything is here, and this is how we kind of go through, uh, you know, the chapter, and, and you can read through here. And there's a lot of good things in terms of, don't forget, there's little items you can click over here, and there even eventually there'll be, uh, you know, multiple pictures. There'll be some... Uh, uh, animations that show you different things about how networks work. I went through, this is the first thing that loaded on my screen. You must have been on Course Index just a second ago. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's course index there. Okay. But, and, you know, if, if you, once you start reading uh, the course, now if you just click launch course, it takes you to this. And then you can pick your chapter. Or if you're in the class and you want to go to a specific chapter without doing that, you can just go to modules and then launch the chapter from there. So, you know, for instance, if you want to read chapter one, just expand chapter one and launch chapter one. And it takes okay. you straight to chapter one. Okay. Okay. Any qu any other questions about kind of how we do this? Because again, what we've got is Moodle is just kind of the front end we needed to get you in to prove you're in the class and to, and to do once a week come through. Netacad.com is our primary course site and the primary materials for the course are under the module item. Okay. Right now we've got packet tracers that need to be completed with packet tracer which can be, uh, you can get it from the student resources on the main page and then uploaded. And then we've got labs that are either research labs that do not require net labs or labs that do have a corresponding net labs lab with them. And those labs are gonna be the ones that, let me go to scheduler here. They're gonna be the ones that are, uh, show you pictures of devices. So basically here are all the labs that you will complete inside of NetLabs. Now folks, right now I will tell you this, right this minute we've got, you'll notice this says CCNA routing, uh, CCNA introduction networks version 5.1. We are using the 5.1 labs that are in the NetLab system. The 6.0 labs will be released uh, on Feb around February 24th. When we when those get released, I'll switch over to those. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and get you in that labs and get you going so you understand kind of what's going on and how how to how to work through the system. Um, any lab you complete will stay the same. I mean, you won't have to go back and do any labs over. Just be aware that uh, if it changes and you see a version six on here, it just means I enabled the six labs and took the five one labs away. Okay. Any other questions? Um, just one more. Um, Go again. So for discussion board, are, are we having any discussion board, or is it just that one-time introductory thing on Moodle? I'm gonna I'm gonna do weekly class meetings like this. Okay. Like oh. This. Okay. Oh, oh, you you talking about the discussion board here? That one? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. That's the only one you'll have to do. Now we ha I'll have weekly class meetings. Uh, it's much. You know, there may be a week I have to miss because of, of travel or whatever. But weekly class meetings in WebEx. Uh, and we do have this discussion board here if you need to ask any questions. You know, feel free to ask discussions here, um, and, and you can definitely do that. Feel free to call me, email me. Um, you know, I'm available. But we will be having weekly WebEx meetings. If you can't make them, that's fine. I will be recording them and sending them out. This is a good group here. That's a good number. I think it's almost everybody in the class. So very good. I would have gotten in on time, but I, I had some difficulties on this end, so. That's okay. So the first time you run WebEx, you've got to load a bunch of little soft mostly. <laughs> yeah, load software, check your all your, uh, your um, you know, your microphones and speakers and everything. But uh, from here on out, you shouldn't have any problems. You should be able to jump right in. Are you planning to do Tuesday same time or? Uh, it will typically be Tuesday, yes, Tuesday, four to five, or five to six, depending on whether or not I need to flip flop you with my my other class. I'm teaching a uh, writing switching essentials class also, so it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday, but typically Tuesday. Okay, great. That work pretty good for everybody. Wednesdays aren't aren't good for me, but Tuesdays are. Okay, Tuesday's best for me. Okay, well then I'll I'll try my best to keep Tuesdays for us. Okay, well, Tuesday is great, but uh, I do teach at 5.30. Okay, so I'll try to do it at 4 each day with, with the intro class. Okay, Wednesdays will be fine, too, if, that, if everybody works with that, too. Okay, all right. Are there any other questions? I'm going I'm to stop sharing my desktop unless there's any questions about the course flow. Did you okay. unmute, uh, Deidre? Oh, oh, sorry. Hold it. Deidre, I'm sorry. Cedric, I'm sorry, I, I muted you because you were talking and I, I didn't unmute you, I'm sorry. All right, um, I'm gonna stop the recording, that way y'all can ask any questions you wanna ask without being recorded.